Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is a slightly unusual start to a video as I have to be relatively quiet. I am in a submarine and I am currently, where am I, 130 feet underwater. And that's because I'm hiding from some aircraft who, somewhere up there, far above me, are looking for me. Now I'm on an American submarine in World War II, uh, very near the Philippines at the moment because this is Silent Hunter 4. So this is where we are at the minute. We are just north of Manila in the Luzon Strait. Now my current mission is to patrol around this area and look for enemy craft. And I thought that might be an interesting thing to record. So let's take a look. Just in case you didn't believe that I was underwater. Ooh, up a periscope. This is my periscope. It's amazing, I love it. <laughs> so, we need to surface the boat. The periscope isn't going to be long enough to poke through the surface, I don't think, by quite some margin at the moment. But maybe we can have a look and see whether those aeroplanes have buzzed off into the distance yet, and whether it's safe for us to re-emerge. So I'm just going to bring the submarine up to periscope depth, and I'll just give myself a little bit of forward thrust as well. To understand what's happening now, you need to understand a little bit about submarines. So submarines go up and down, broadly speaking, by using compressed air and ballast tanks. Uh, so they can go up and down pretty much on the spot. However, they have a limited capacity to do so, and a more effective way to go up and down is to use your dive planes. And these work effectively like the aerolons on a plane. Effectively, they're little wings on the side of the submarine. So as you go forwards, they'll just drive you upwards or downwards, as the case may be. So in this case, I've given myself a little bit of forward thrust, and my periscope here is about to break the surface, and we'll see what we can see. And we can see bugger all, because of course we're in the middle of sodding nowhere in the grand scheme of things. But what I don't see is a gigantic squadron of fighter planes. Now, unfortunately, I'm unlikely to see them from a periscope anyway, so... Uh, okay, well... Sod it, let's surface the boat. I love doing this on this game. Nothing is happening and it's suddenly bursting from the seas. In this case, very slowly. It's our submarine. Ah, oh, I love it. This is quite an old game now, so this is 2007 that this game came out. And I played it massively in 2007, a lot in 2008, and pretty much not at all since then. But I think it looks reasonably pretty. I mean, admittedly, it's not having to do an awful lot in the way of graphics right now. It's a calm sea, and there's no land in sight. But later on in the video, we're going to see some ships, and if possible, we're going to sink some ships. And it looks quite pretty, as I'm sure you'll see. So, for now, let's hop back onto our bridge. There's Gustav. I don't know if his name is actually Gustav, but I've decided he's called Gustav because of his beautiful head of hair. Hello, Gustav. Gustav is keeping his eyes out for ships on the horizon, which probably I should be doing as well. I am, of course, the captain. I am Captain Jensen Blake, possibly Commander Jensen Blake. Can't actually remember what the submarine command hierarchy is. But anyway, sorry, we've completely lost our point. There are no planes. We are currently completely safe. We'll see how long that lasts. Let's accelerate time a bit. So we can get an idea of what's happening. Ah, look! It immediately brought me out of accelerated time because here behind me, we've picked up two planes on our radar. Now these are what caused me to dive in the first place, but while I was underwater I've moved onwards a little bit and I think I'm going to be out of their search pattern. Now why am I diving to avoid planes? Because planes have bombs, and contrary to popular belief, submarines, at least in this time period, were basically sitting ducks. They were designed for stealth, and to sidle up to ships, and to fire a torpedo, and to sink them at range, and then to slink away into the darkness. They were not designed for going up against aircraft. Of course there's point B as well. If the aircraft see me, even if I manage to evade their bombs, which I'm reasonably good, I should be able to do, they will go and get other people. And this sea right now, the Luzon Strait, is swarming with Japanese ships. This is right in the middle of the Japanese invasion of the Philippines as the Japanese army starts to sweep south across the South China Sea. 
and eventually into China, obviously. And I really don't want to bring down all of that attention on top of me, because that'd be a bad thing, because I am but a small submarine. Those little squares. Uh, they could mean death. Even though we're on the surface, we've just picked up this. This is a sound contact, so our hydrophones have detected an engine of a ship and our sound officer thinks that it's moving away from us and is somewhere in that direction, i.e. ahead of us. Let's go up to the surface. From our deck... No, my handheld binoculars aren't going to see anything. Let's use these ones here and have a look. The more powerful magnification... No, I can't see anything. What I'm doing is I'm looking for smoke on the horizon. Which is often the... Ooh, is that something there? Maybe? Ooh, um, I don't think that is anything. I think that's just a smudge in the sky. Which at least means that it's far enough away that hopefully I don't have to worry about it. We'll see. Quick update. There's now three enemy ships have been spotted. Hmm, now what this probably means is that it's an enemy task force. Now, as I say, the Jap Japanese are busy invading right now, so this entire area of water is swarming with the Japanese Navy. It's daylight. It is currently 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm not convinced that I really want to engage an enemy task force. I probably can't win if I do. But on the other hand, I'm a submarine. I'm stealthy, so there's no reason we can't sneak up on them and have a little look through our periscope just to kind of get an idea of what they're up to. Where are they? So we think they should just about be within sight now. It's saying... Ship ship. Spotted. Oh, ship spotted. Where? They're in 009. So here. And it must be at the... Oh, oh, it gave me a little arrow. Oh my god, so really... It spotted a ship there. Bloody hell. I cannot see that in the slightest. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's a good job you're here, Gary, because I'm... Apparently, bloody useless. I can't even see a silhouette of a ship. And it's, ooh, ooh, it's flickering. So my indicator is flickering. There are ships out there, but I think they're at the very, very limits of what we can see. If you at home can see a ship, please leave a comment in the comments section, and I'll try and improve my, uh, my performance for any future submarine missions. Thank ship you. Spotted. Ship spotted. I know. Where? Where, you bastard? Where? 009. Right. It's not this. The whole purpose of having a nice cheaty camera view is that you can cheat. This isn't for my benefit, you understand. This is entirely for the benefit of you viewers at home. So let's go and have a look at this little task force and see what it is that we're dealing with. This isn't very exciting, I do apologise. There doesn't seem to be any way of making the camera faster, but there they are. Ah. There's a ship probably means there'll be other ships nearby. What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? You are a gunboat. You are a coastal gunboat of some description. So this was probably a civilian vessel originally. Coal powered from the look of it. And if you look, they've just literally mounted two guns on the front of it. It's quite pretty in a very simplistic sort of way. Effectively, this is a destroyer. So this is sort of going to be the smallest level of Japanese destroyer that we're dealing with. Um, I can't even see, looking at it, any depth charges. Which means if we do go underwater, there's not going to be an awful lot it can do to hurt us. Which is great. Because depth charges, if you don't know, are basically weighted barrels with explosives that are set to go off at a certain depth. Uh, destroyers chuck them over the edge where they think a submarine is. They sink down and then at the preset level, say 50 feet, 100 feet, whatever, they explode with the idea being to rip a submarine open. And you don't have to do a lot of damage to a submarine at that sort of depth to completely fuck it up. We really don't want to be depth charged, that'd be a bad thing. Especially because these... Oh, these look a lot more competent. Uh, I see these on the back. These barrel racks here, these are depth charges. And I think those little stick things there are depth charge launchers, so it'll sort of fire them out in a star pattern to either side of the ship, if that is what I think it is. And there's Chung. Hello, Chung. Chung apparently is the only word that popped into my head. As, that might not even be a Japanese name. That might be horrifically racist. In which case, I apologise to Chinese Chungs everywhere. 
In fact, maybe even maybe he is Chinese. Maybe he decide he is a traitor to the Chinese government and has joined the Japanese Navy in 1940. Damn you, Chung! You're letting down your entire nation. But you do have a really cool gun, so that's probably okay. Right. Ah, oh, bollocks, where's my submarine? You really get a sense of scale when you play these games. So this is a reasonably, or this can be, rather, a reasonably hardcore simulation. So you can play this game with all of the realism settings really cranked up, and then it becomes very difficult, nails hard. Um, there have been people who've played this game without accelerating time, so they've literally played an entire submarine mission in real time. I'm not going to do that, because I have a life, but... Ship spotted. Ship spotted, thank you. But I'm still really impressed with that sort of achievement. It's pretty, pretty ballsy, that. Can I see a ship with my normal binoculars? No, I can't. They're a long way away. Like, I know that we have to be careful of destroyers, especially a little task force like that, but even so, I mean... Oh, it's an interesting point, by the way. I am actually doing the right thing by staying on the surface. Now, do you remember earlier on on the map when I detected their engines underwater from a long way away? If I go underwater, it means that they actually have more chance of detecting me at this sort of distance, because they'll be able to hear me even before they can see me. Whereas if I'm on the surface, the chance of them hearing me is probably slightly lessened, because the noise can go upwards a bit, rather than down in the water where they're listening. There's going to be hundreds of submarine fanatics shouting at the screen now to say that I'm wrong. But broadly speaking, I think I'm right. I certainly know that in World War II, if they crash-dived at the wrong time, uh, all sorts of shit would happen because you would appear suddenly on the hydrophones. So they'd be able to hear where you were. And then later on in the war, obviously, they'd be able to hear you on the sonar as well. Although I think it might be a little bit too early for sonar at this point. Sonar's the thing that goes, ping, if you didn't know. Do like spotted. making that noise. Ship spotted. I know there's a ship spotted. You can stop whispering it to me. Why are you whispering? Why are you whispering to me? I know there's a ship spotted. You've told me many times. It's not like over there. Like, how far away are they? How far away are they? Right. They are seven miles away. Seven nautical miles away. It is not like by whispering ship spotted when something is seven miles away that you're going to do any good at all. I mean, ugh. Right. What are you looking... And now you're looking up at the sky. Oh, I suppose you're looking for planes. I'll let you off this once. Dave here just looks like he's lost a relative. He's just gazing vacantly. He's not even looking at the map. He's gazing vaguely at that corner of the desk. It's like someone stole his donut and he's just gazing longingly at where it used to be. It's a hard life on a submarine. Planes again. This time it looks like they're on an intercept course. Now I can crash dive, which will cost me about half an hour, or I can try and fight them off. It kind of depends what they are. If they're just scout planes, there's not going to be too much they can do to me. <laughs> Famous last words. Right. Man the AA gun. I want you to fire at will. So when they get nearer, we will open fire. Uh, is that bright? Is that bright? I'll tell you what. Don't... No. Man the AA gun. Sorry, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. Right. Man the AA gun. Don't fire at will. I hadn't realised how dark it had gotten. So, it is possible that they will just slip past us in the darkness and they won't even notice. Maybe. They're not very far away. I'm whispering now. I'm doing exactly what I shouted at Gary for. Gary? Whatever his name was. But somewhere very nearby... Our fighter planes, or... Oh, bloody hell! Jesus! Uh-oh. Okay, that's bad, 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 bad. Open fire, open fire. Shoot them back, you bastard. That sounds like a dive bomb. Uh! Hey! Oh, God, we, we got him, though. We got him. He's on fire, the fucker. Nah! You'll think twice, won't you, you bastard? Damn, I didn't realise they'd have bombs. Hopefully they've only got one bomb, though. Okay, we're just going to have to keep a careful eye on them. We're going to leave our people on fire at will. Poor Will. And then when they come round for another pass, we'll try and shoot them out of the bally air. Okay, here they come again. And this time, I'm going to take control of the AA gun myself, because yeah, surely that'll work. Not 
very good with this gun. Uh-oh. Oh, I seem to dissuade them, though. Oh, I, I also ran out of ammo. Oh, bloody hell, he doesn't look very healthy, does he? That's not a healthy angle for that plane to be going. And... Poof. Sorry, friend. So I must have got a shot on him, mustn't I, as he went past the second time. Well, to be fair, he was already on fire. And it's sad, but, you know, that's war. Okay, he's coming in again. I can't see him, but I... Where is he? 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 Why can't I see him? Oh, he's really high! Oof! Oh, I've got some hits on him at least. So the yellow bullets you can see over the noise are the tracer rounds. So in actual fact I'm firing a lot more bullets than I appear to be. You're just only seeing the ones to help me guide where I'm looking basically. Oh, that does not look good my friend. Let's jump to the front to get a better view. Oh no. He has, get it, zero chance. Oh. Uh, it's funny because he died. Bingo. So, we found a merchant. It is moving at a constant distance and it's at 0 5 7. Right, let's do an intercept course. Okay, it's out there somewhere. It's roughly 30 degrees this way and I can't see him but I have had a report from my crew that they think they can so oh bloody hell as you can see the sea is considerably rougher than it was earlier and oh there 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 do you see him just about whoa, as it sways up and down see his masts sticking up oh god I'll try and control it there there's the bugger right let's lock on to him wonderful now, let's have a look at the map. We are on almost a perfect intercept course. Now, I've got a couple of options here. I could dive. So I could dive underwater, I could set myself up in an ambush position in front of him, and I could torpedo him. But, he appears to be by himself. Which means it would probably be a waste of a torpedo, because most merchant ships aren't armed. Which pretty much means I can sail up to him and tell him to sod off. And there she blows, flying a Japanese flag, which means she is valid prey. Fantastic. Now, she started weaving from side to side in an attempt to avoid any torpedoes I'm firing, which would normally work great, except I ain't going to use torpedoes, because I've got a deck gun. Now, the question is, can I bring it to bear? I can bring it to bear. Now, how far away do we think the ship is? Let's do a thousand metre yard rather ranging shot and bam hit oh hit quite high up as well let's lower that down a bit bam oh got a boom there bam right let's slow right down because we've got a good firing angle at the minute oh we've we've lit some fires sorry matey let's do some manual firing so we can aim a little bit lower in the water because ideally we want to make a hole under the water line. Although, because if we have a hole under the water line, the ship will flood. Although it already looks in a pretty bad way, actually. Let's yes. stop our ship. All stop. stop, yes. Oh, whoops, missed. <clears throat> Didn't see that. Oh, it's so quiet. That's better. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, that ship is already in a bad way. See the little splash as it impacts? That means the shell goes underwater and then hits the ship. And there is a slight risk, looking at it, that he's going to come around, or come about rather, and ram into me. And I won't put it past him, I think that's fair enough in the circumstances. You know, if you're going to lose... I'll tell you what, let's try and... Whoa! <laughs> Jesus, that's the noise of his... Uh... Well, it's basically the noise of his ship being fucked up. <laughs> Tell you what, let's yes, back go backwards a bit. Because I don't want him to come across and actually ram into me. That would be bad. I could shoot the captain. Bam. Captain's dead. Come on, I don't want to waste all my ammo on you. It's good if I did move back, you know. Look how bloody close he's gotten. What a bastard. Tell you what, let's turn a bit as well. Two, three, Just so two, we stay yes, on this side of Tell you what, I really did need to move, didn't I? Fucking hell, let's go to the front. 
Whoa, that's so close. Emergency. Back. Yes, Back. Back. Emergency. Back. Back, you bastard. New course, seven, zero. New course, okay, I'm panicking now. Need to not panic. However, oh, look at him. Look at him. You know, he might not have been ramming me. He might have just been completely out of control. I think, oh, I think he's going, ladies and gentlemen. I think he's going. We should sort of play, maybe we should play the last post. If I can find a royalty-free version of the last post, I'll play it here. If not, I'll play some other completely appropriate music. Oh, dear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think that ship is very well. But look, 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 the engines are still running. There's life in the old girl yet. Let's slowly rotate my gun around. At this point, realistically, I need to confirm the kill. As cruel as it might feel. It does feel cruel. Oh, it does feel cruel. Very, very cruel. There we go. And that's that. Enemy unit destroyed. As it just disappears beneath the waves, very gently. I always think with this game it's one of the saddest things in the world, particularly the silence now. As the gunfire stops and the ship just upends and disappears under the water. Oof! Bloody hell. Even though it's a game, even though it is only a game, I still feel... It's floating, look. I still feel guilty. So, on that amazingly guilty note, we are a little bit nearer to completing our objective. Let's do a bit of a patrol in this area. See what we can see. I'd like to torpedo something and demonstrate a proper submarine attack, and then we'll probably call this video to a halt. So let's go looking for a ship to torpedo. If you look at the map, this isn't coincidence. So, there are some planes here. They have gone to check out the ship that I sank. They've been patrolling up and down here, and oh, look at that. There. Where are you? Uh-oh. Don't like that silence. It's a bad silence. Where are you? Why can't I see you? Ah! Okay, that was a bomb. I'm not panicking. Okay, I was panicking a bit. Yep, you're better at it than I am. Something just shout over the noise. Oh! Bah! Oh my god, it's coming right for us. Oh my god, it's coming. Whoa! <laughs> that was a bit close. Bloody hell, that was cool. The island of Hong Kong has surrendered to the Imperial Japanese today. By the way, Merry Christmas. That's December 25th, 1941. That's really depressing. Does that mean that I actually sunk that ship on Christmas Eve? Damn. Oh, that's horrible. Okay, now I feel bad. There's a warship closing on us. It's night. I'm going to try and lay an ambush. We'll see what happens. There's another signal. It's probably a task force. Oh, bollocks. So, right. <laughs> okay, so. If you look, that's his view range. We don't want to get in that. It's time to go to periscope depth. Whenever I see my submarine slowly slip under the waves, I do wonder if it's ever going to surface again. Because that is a very real risk. We're about to attack a task force. Now it's at night, which is in our favour, but it's a clear sky, which really isn't in our favour. We, ideally we want some rain, we want poor visibility, we want them to have chicken pox, we want all the officers to be having an orgy, which they're not allowed to be interrupted from. We want all the benefits we can get because we are very, very heavily outmatched. As soon as they know where we are, we die. And there he is. You can see his wake more than you can see him. That is our enemy. Now we can... We're playing on actually quite an easy difficulty in this respect. So it will already tell us what he is. However, if I were playing on a more appropriate difficulty, 
I would use this lovely little thing. This is our big bumper book of ships. And this is literally what they used. So they would flip through. Oh, it could be him. It could, it could actually be him. It's unlikely to be a battleship, though. I, th I think a battleship would be a lot more obvious than that. Let's keep going until we get to carriers. Bloody hell. Destroyers. Destroyer, destroyer, cruiser, 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 destroyer. Could be him. Could be him. Although destroyers do all tend to look pretty bloody similar. And I'm not very good at this bit of the game. But anyway, that's how they would do it, because they were better than me. My gunnery captain says they've only got a poor chance of hitting. And that's because if you look at the angle we're at, we're going to have to basically put some spin on the torpedo. Uh, you can sort of set it with one course correction after you fire it. If I bring my ship around to the northeast, we might get an easier shot. But we're already pushing it a bit time-wise. Select torpedo one. And really hope that this shot improves. It'll take four minutes. Four minutes for the torpedo to reach. A lot can happen in four minutes. They can start swerving from side to side. They can change their course. They can spot me. Any of those things would mean the torpedo missed. And we really only have one shot. Because his friend there is going to want to come and fuck us up. Okay, I think this is as good a shot as we're going to get. It's gone green. Sod it. Firing tube one. Okay, that was enough of a delay. I'm going to fire tube two as well, because that doubles our chances on the event that one of the torpedoes is a dud. I.e., it's possible that the big plunger on the front of the torpedo won't work properly. And it'll just bounce off the hull. Quite often that happens if the ship's at an angle. It just sort of skims off it, rather than actually impacting and exploding. Later in the war they got around this. They put all sorts of other fancy detonators. So they had magnetic detectors. Uh, detonators. So as the torpedo passed underneath the ship, the magnet in it would be triggered by the big hull of the ship and then it would explode. Um, you also have, really late in the war, you also have acoustic torpedoes. And those are really nasty. So they have a built-in hydrophone. You fire them ahead of yourself and they automatically home in on the loudest sound signal. Apparently I've got a good shot on this other fellow. At the moment we haven't been detected. So I am going to fire off a brace of torpedoes against the back ship as well. I'm going to hop out to the outside view. And there. Can you see this? My torpedoes streaking through the water towards that destroyer. And it looks like they're going to miss, actually. It really looks like they're going to miss. I mean, distance is a bit uh, deceptive, potentially. But it looks like they're going to go streaking past behind him. Well, that's shit, isn't it? <laughs> this is why we find multiple torpedoes. I was wrong! I was wrong! Here's one of my torpedoes. Look, I was following the second pair. Now, as it happens, it's missing. But that does mean that there is still a chance. Only a small chance, but there is still a chance. Where's the other torpedo? Oh, look! Look, 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 look! Can you hear that noise? They are on alert. They have spotted one of the torpedo trails and now they're looking for my periscope now because we've stopped we don't have a wake behind us and it's the wake there we go that missed it's the wake that normally gives away submarines now the issue is they're going to inform their friend here as well it's only diddy oh, the diddy destroyer uh, their diddy friend here is also going to be alarmed and he's going to change his route which means there's more of a chance our torpedoes are just going to zoom straight past harmlessly now why aren't I surfacing? Because I will have this absolute bastarding fuck shot out of me. These guys have two big guns on the front, I only have one, and this guy over here is a little bit bigger and has... That's a really big gun. Okay, he has a really big gun. At least two really big guns. And apparently some guy's smoking. This looks a little bit more promising. Torpedo streaking towards him. And it's a hit! It's a hit! No! It can't have been a dud! No! Oh my god, look at that! Look at that! They've gone shooting past him. Oh, either they were set at the wrong depth, or it looks like the spread between them was just enough for one to go in front and one behind. So his evasive action was enough to save his life. Bugger. Right, time to do something stupid. I'll be honest, 
Missing then really annoyed me. So I'm going to do the thing that you should absolutely never, ever do. I'm going to surface. And I'm going to show you why submarines, for all their threat, for all their danger, are horribly, horribly outmatched on the surface. At this point, we're not actually a submarine anymore. We are a motor torpedo boat, which is sort of the ancestor of the submarine. Obviously, they're still used in their own right. The only difference, really, between a torpedo boat and a submarine is that a torpedo boat is better armed. We're just like a submersible version. Oh, there we go. It's begun. They've spotted us. Oh my god, that was really close. Ah! Okay, that's fucking terrifying. Jesus Christ. Okay. Ah! Jesus. Okay, that is genuinely one of the scariest noises I've heard in gaming. Oh, oh that was close. Right, okay. Um 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 The important thing in situations like this is not to panic. Yes, sir. Crash dive. Crash dive. A wooga! A wooga! Fuck! Okay, a captain goes down with his ship. In this case, quite literally, I'm gonna stand here until it falls. Oh Jesus Christ, that was close! Muddy hell! We haven't been hit yet, they've been really Oh, there we go! I'm going underwater. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. Right. The reason I'm doing this, I want to demonstrate how fucking terrifying it is to be in a submarine in this situation. Torpedo missed. Oh, thank you very much. I hadn't fucking realised from the fact that the destroyers are about to eat me. Right. We're going to bring the submarine down as deep as we can feasibly go in an attempt to avoid these things. I'm pretty sure that bigger destroyer will have depth charges, which is one of the things I want to show you, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear the alarm? It must be close if we can hear it. I'm going to go down to 150 feet. I don't know what the maximum depth is of this submarine. That would be a useful thing to know right now. Um, 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 please do... Four hull damage. Do I actually have any damage to any compartments? I'll tell you what, let's... Uh, there's no point doing repairs right now. We should probably actually be at battle stations. No, new plan. Let's do silent running. Let's drop down to slow speed, and we're going to make an abrupt turn to the right. If we hop up here to the surface, there is no trace of me. I have disappeared into the inky black, and they have resorted now to doing a search. So their little destroyer brains will be thinking, hmm... Torpedo missed, oh thank you. Their little destroyer brains will be thinking, how can we track him down? How can we find him? The only information they have is the last time they saw me. Let's have a look at this ship. They look very calm, don't they? It's alright lads, it's just a submarine. There we go. Depth charges. So those racks on the back drop off depth charges behind them. Now you can see we're not here. We have an orange marker for where we are. Over there, in fact. So, oh, bloody hell, he's not far away, is he? There we go. It started. So that splash was them dropping a depth charge in, and any second now, if we zoom out, it's not too far away. This is one of the scarier things about this game. On higher difficulties, you don't get that external camera. And obviously in real life, they didn't have that external camera. They had to sit in this enclosed, claustrophobic environment. Listening to the creak, creaking of the metal. And this, if you look here, this is the time when whispering comes in. Those destroyers up there are using their hydrophones. Literally, they're in underwater microphones in sort of a glass bulb. They're listening for our engines. They're listening for anything. And you can hear voices underwater. If you've ever been in a swimming pool, sound carries underwater. It's gone very, very quiet. Let's check in with our destroyers. They're having a think. They are circling the area between them 
where they think I might be and they're shining their lights because they're looking for my periscope which they're hoping is peeking out above the water and that little orange reticle in the centre is me so they know what they're bloody doing don't they Let's see are they still as calm as they were before he's brushing lint off his jacket are you sure you're not British let's do a slow dramatic zoom I might add some imposing music at this point as the destroyer circles around our known position and under the waves somewhere that didn't work where the fuck is my submarine yeah and under the waves a sleek lurking black shape drifts silently through the seas how fucking cool is that missed he doesn't quite know where I am but his friend where's his friend oh bloody hell you can stop now he's not getting me his friend there is doing the sort of the secondary role so he's gonna stay quiet and he's gonna stay observant so when you're dropping depth charges down you can't listen underwater for the sound of engines for fairly obvious reasons all you can hear is the bloody great bang and then the aftershocks in the water he's off to one side he stands a better chance of listening to me or hearing me if I do anything stupid now the time is 11 o'clock at night these two don't really have much hope in catching me at this point unless I do anything stupid I should just be able to drift away as if I was never there and as I did no damage it's pretty much like I never was there bugger that's much better so ladies and gentlemen as the Sun rises and poor old Gary maybe poor old balding guy here is blinded by its beautiful rays I think it's time to say goodbye I really like Silent Hunter 4 it's janky it's slightly buggy it's incredibly niche as far as interests go but it gives a sort of experience that no other game gives it's a stealth game par excellence it really is it's that I don't think I can think of any other examples that blend both stealth and simulation it's a very strange mix and the fact that it's historically accurate as well really really adds something to the game this is definitely one of my favorite series of all time for all of its warts warts and all and I'm delighted to have been able to share at least a little bit with you, albeit very unsuccessfully. So, ladies and gentlemen, my name was Jensen Blake. I was commander of the SS Shark, <laughs> the American submarine in the Pacific, in 1941. Thank you all very much for watching, and goodbye.